about the process since November, uh, input we received as uh, we worked with the budget uh, subcommittee with the board to put tonight's uh, uh, final budget presentation uh, together. It was a lot of work uh, from a number of different stakeholders uh, throughout the district and, and the city uh, to put together. Um, open invitations uh, to the board as well, which uh, uh, the chairman has attended our uh, subcommittee meeting um, as we uh, put this together so that uh, when we come to tonight that there are, are no surprises in terms of uh, uh, our budget, but that we think we have put together a, uh, a very conservative uh, budget to keep things uh, at least where they are today uh, going in our schools. Um, as we go through the presentation, any questions that you do have, uh, just please uh, let me know. We'll stop the presentation, answer them as you go through. We will get as detailed and stay as long as uh, necessary uh, or go through as quickly as you would like. Uh, in addition to tonight's presentation, you have received a um, condensed version of the full budget. If there's anybody that would like the line by line of the budget as well, uh, we could certainly make that available. But we were trying to literally cut down on some printing costs um, and make things available online. Uh, but uh, for the full line by line, uh, if you would like the paper copy, we'll certainly make that available and sit down with you at any time. Uh, to go through that as well. So uh, if there are no questions as we begin. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Rizzo. Uh, for those who have not had the uh, opportunity and the privilege of meeting our uh, business manager, uh, Mr. Rizzo, who is responsible for putting uh, tonight's presentation together for you. So, Mr. Rizzo. Thank you, Mr. So I'd like to also just take a quick moment. We have uh, board members here tonight. But we have uh, Chairman Marcuccio, Madam Secretary Harris, and board member Dan Foley are uh, with us as well. So thank you very much for your support coming out tonight. Okay, so as uh, Tommy said, my name is Mark Izzo. I'm the business manager. This is my uh, going into my second year this August. Uh, so what we'll do tonight is we'll walk through the presentation. And again, I also will express my gratitude to um, our Board of Education for you as taxpayers. I think it'll be very grateful to have this group of people because uh, Boy, they are a hard-working group, and we spent a lot of time putting this budget together. They asked a lot of hard questions, so uh, I appreciate all their support, and I certainly appreciate the chairman's support for coming to the first few meetings because I think uh, some things were pointed out that helped us put together our presentation. So, uh, again, you all, uh, I delivered these this package to City Hall on the 23rd of March, um, so you have the full. You should have the full copy there, and uh, you know if there's any other details we need, we'll flesh it out. If there's questions we can't answer tonight. Um, I don't expect that, then we can, uh, we'll get more information as we need. Okay, so why don't we get started here. Again, this is the letter. So basically what the letter says, the request is 17826, so it's an increase about $600,000 or about 3.52% over the prior year. Uh, uh, again, we'll get into it, but I will tell you honestly that Dr. Conway and I went through about 1,200 different line items of information that we went through. We go through every single line item. I went through it all. And then we sat through, went through with the board, uh, of, uh, our board budget subcommittee multiple times, and then met with the board of education multiple times to come through with this budget. So I will tell you that I've gone through each one of these accounts a n number of times. I will also tell you that this, uh, it's a pretty austere budget. There's not a lot of fluff in here. Um, you know, basically we're covering, you know, contracting costs like busing and uh, teachers, you know, union contracts and things like that. So there's not a lot in here that's going to be, uh, you know, that's uh, fat or uh, discretionary spending. And this is pretty much a pretty austere budget. Um, so we'll go through that. And if you want to stop me, please do. So again, as far as the budget summary goes, this past year, um, we were portioned $17 million to twenty. We're asking for consideration of a budget of $17,826,000, which is an increase of about $600,000, or 3.52% uh, for this year. Uh, if you look at the budget, the way it's broken down by location, you can see you know, the various schools, how it breaks out the elementary. So the schools are pretty even. High school has some more specialty programs, um, and then the, the athletic program also. So that rolls up into their central office staffing, special education which we'll get into a little bit later on, is such a big expense of what we do and then some of the minor expense we have. A very small amount of it goes to uh, support St. Mary's and St. Michael's out of the operating budget. Um, and as you also know, 
the school operates under grant money also. So we get grant money, federal <coughs> grant money, state grant money. So that's in addition. Tonight we're just talking about the seventeen point uh, six million dollar, uh, seventeen point eight million dollar request tonight. So changes in budget, we'll go through all the details, but you can see a lot of it's in other purchase services. We'll get into that, and I'll be honest with you, the biggest driver here this year beyond the new contracts, uh, you know, new contracts every year, 2 to 3%, depending on the unions, but the biggest expense we'll talk about tonight is going to be special education. And I've been in this, I've been in it, you know, we talked about the last year's budget, this year's budget, it's special education. And, uh, you know, hopefully we position ourselves well, so we will uh, live within our means. Uh, but, you know, as the year goes on, okay. uh, students come out of the district, students come into the district with higher needs, you know, we can be talking about $150,000 to $160,000 per student, depending on the needs. So, it just, it's just the way it is. And we owe each one of these children an education, so and that's what we do. So, we'll have to make you know, ends meet as best we can. Um, so, again, this is just a little bit of a different poke of how the budget's made out. You can see the larger percentage of it is made up about certified salaries. Salaries is the biggest part of it. And then you get into other purchase services. Again, things like uh, special education, we put the students out, um, you know, out to, uh, to either private schools or uh, state-run schools. It gets expensive, and that's, that's the biggest cost um, of what we do. So again, when I tell you that you know, we don't have a lot of discretionary, I mean, we have salaries, we have salaries, uh, professional services. So there's not a lot of discretionary spending here. I mean, if I had a look at this budget and look at everything that's in here, Probably 95% of this budget spoken for between busing and special education and salaries. So there's just not a lot of discretionary spending. And if you go through it, and I'm hoping you've got the opportunity to go through the book, and you look at the supplies budget, it's pretty austere. There's not a lot of money here. We're not buying a lot of fancy stuff. You know, we were very fortunate. Dr. Conley's done an excellent job and continued to get us grant money. So we've been trying to use that to, you know, uh, you know, the high school. We improved the high school last year. We renovated the whole, the entire high school. Uh, we put new furniture in, so you know, that, that's all coming from grant money. New computers, laptops for the kids, a lot of that money relying on grant money. So the operating funds keep the basic infrastructure of our schools going. So the maintenance and the custodial staff, things like that. So um, we're making do with what we have. Okay, so as far as the biggest increases in the budget, put this together. These are the top nine. And basically you get some noise down here, but the biggest piece is right here. So there you go. I mean. Tuition, tuition to private sources, this agency. So you're talking four hundred fifty thousand dollar increase in special education. So we have a couple of students. One student came in last year with very high expense. Um, again, you're talking transportation of three hundred some odd dollars a day, a day over one hundred eighty three days. So it gets very very expensive. And again, we own these students in education just like we do any other regular ed students. So. Um, that's the biggest driver that goes into it. Certified salaries, again, like I said, uh, we entered, um, we're entering a new teacher's contract this year. Um, average of about 3%, it was like 2.95, I think, percent as far as teacher salary is go. So, um, you know, we went through that whole negotiation process. So we have, uh, you know, everybody's under contract. The only contract we're going to be, uh, actually, we have to work before now in the end of the school year is the paraprofessionals. And I think that's going to be just a continuation of the current contract. So. Those, that's what I built into my budget here. So again, when you get into, you know, once you get past these three, so you're talking 450 and you're talking another 150, is there 600,000? And the rest of the stuff is kind of small. So as far as other professional services, what you're going to see here is that the biggest part of that 80,000, or about 77,000, is um, the prior year in our budget we had a, uh, a speech teacher on staff. What we decided is to better accommodate our students' needs to be a little more flexible. We've outsourced that, so they come in and work with us. So we finally get a little more bang for the buck by doing that. So the speech teacher that we had uh, is gone, has left, and we've now used that uh, so there. So it's going to look like there's a spike here. The spike is because, again, we've added that as an outsourced service. Uh, student transportation services, we're in the year, we're going to go into year two of a, a three-year, really a five-year contract with uh, All-Star Transportation, who I will say, and I will tell you, I think they've done and I'm pretty tough with our vendors, and I think they've done a really, a really decent job. Um, they are very responsive to us. Uh, I think we're getting the most bang for the buck. We are, as you, any of you know, we are in uh, the same yard with uh, Aunt Sonia and Shelton and uh, Seymour. So we have regionalized the best we can with that. I think we've got good economies there. We have the same dispatcher, same mechanics. And um, you know, I think they've done a really good job. John DeFore has been very good to work with, as has his staff. So. Again, our bus costs are, are locked in for the next five years. My plan, our plan is going to be, we'll, we'll see out year three, and then all of our, the, uh, the three of us, the four of us in the yard, all of us together, 
uh, we're going to look at maybe collectively going to negotiate with All Star to get a little more bang for the buck. So uh, the way I structured the contract is we have three solid years and then we have two option years. But at the end of year three, we'll get together with the other three districts and hopefully get a little bit better bang for our buck as far as All Star goes. But they've done a very good job. We added a bus this year for some pre-K kids. They're responsive. Had a bus there. Had a driver. So and they've done a very good job. Fike, of course, is going to go up. Your salaries go up. Fike is going to go up, right? And then the rest of this stuff. Uh, just a small point here. We, we were putting, we were spending about sixteen to eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a year for an athletic trainer. It was kind of paid by the drink. So it was as we went, as we went to an event, the athletic trainer was there. We're going to bring an athlete. We brought an athletic trainer. Um, you know, it was on. So we brought that into our budget this year. So although it was a, uh, we have an on-site. So we're not paying. He's not our. Brendan is a, a young, very energetic, very nice uh, young man. Um, so he's going he's gonna to come on board. We're working on select PT. Uh, so anyway, Brendan is with us. So we're outsourcing this, but it's an on-site trainer. Again, as you um, get into more involved, and I'm sure you've all heard, watched the movie about concussions and everything else, there's a big concern. There's a tremendous reporting need we need to do. And it's a lot on our coaches that we pay. Not a lot of money to do. So it's a lot of paper we have to do to keep in, keep in alignment. So. Uh, this young man is going to be on board with us and working, and everybody likes him so far. So, uh, anyway, that's what the athletic training we got this year. And there's some other small expenses. Largest decreases in the budget were paraprofessional salaries. Um, what we've done is we, uh, by attrition, we've eliminated, there's one position at Bradley School that we no longer needed. Um, we looked at our uh, the requirements for our paras, and we just needed need one in Bradley. So. That's gone. And then we've also been successful, again, like I've said, we've been very really successful with the Title I, Title II money and our Alliance Grant District money, uh, which we've had from the state. And uh, what we've done with that is we're able to pay a few of the paraprofessional salaries there. So uh, by doing that, we've looked at our budget here. So although it looks like we're going down in paraprofessionals, we're not staffing the state pretty much the same, but one at Bradley. And we're going to let the, uh, the grants pay for a few of those. Uh, of those because again we have title one title two money it's money that comes every single year so grants are going to pay for that retirement payments this is goes back to a few years this is the last cohort we have retirees i think there's five people in there so this will be the second to last payment for them uh but what you'll see is one group dropped off so we're down to one group that's left the retirees i think that goes back a couple of years so it'll be before my time um instructional equipment we originally had fifty thousand dollars in there again the alliance grant's going to pay for that that's the excellent program that we've uh that Dr. Conway spearheaded where the students have a one-to-one, so all the, the uh, from sixth grade all the way up through high school, uh, through 12th grade, the students all have laptops. So that program is uh, the infrastructure for that. The only thing we have to pay for that program is we have to pay just for the airtime for the kids to have the, uh, the wireless when they are, are home um, and wireless. So that's one service we have to pay. So again, what we've done is because we initially wanted to have some of that program just to get it going in the operations budget, the program's up and running, it's very successful. So the grant is going the alliance grant is going to pay for this. We've changed our structure as far as the uh, security guards, I don't want to call them security guards, the school. Uh, so what we're doing there is we have attendance monitors and uh, we do have somebody at the desk. If you want the, Dr. Kai, what's her first name at the high school? Cheyenne. Cheyenne, the girl. I mean, she is just, if you go into the high school, she is the nicest girl. Every day she greets you. So, you know, that's basically the only salary we're paying here. And then we have climate and truancy officer, you know, truancy people that are keeping an eye on things. But again, we're having that sponsored by grants. So that comes out of the operating budget. So that's why what you'll see here is we had a higher paid person here. We've kind of diversified that into a couple of different positions instead of just paying one person. Unemployment compensation is going to be out of our budget because that's going to be paid for by the city. Uh, so that's out of the uh, out of our budget, the, uh, the Board of Education budget, and that'll be borne by the city. Uh, oil is down because we entered into an excellent contract. I'm under contract for another year or so. Uh, good contract. Uh, and then some other minor cleanups we did for some of the other accounts. Student enrollment, again, I chart, but the takeaway here is that this year we're at uh, Done, again, we have to report to the state, so these are the official numbers. As of October 1st, we have to report to the state. So 1,383 students attending the schools, and I want you to take note of the 33 at Little Raiders University. Again, for those of you who don't know, that's at the high school now. Uh, we've carved out where the old wood shop was. 
and we built a beautiful facility. If you haven't been there, go see it. It's, I just love going there and seeing those little kids. But anyway, we have 33 um, pre-K uh, students in there now, three and four year olds. So we're at 1383. And then these are the other students that are, uh, that are out of district, um, you know, that go out for various readiness program. But again, I want you to focus on the 1383. And again, you'll see the breakup here of where the percentage of the students are. Um, and again, we do put some of the students out. They go to, a few go to magnet schools. Um, but then we have the uh, special education students that are out placed with private fee. They go to either a private facility or they go to a public facility. Okay, so basically what we've seen here is a growth of about, uh, about 70, about 90, I think, is the growth, roughly. And what's happened is what you'll see is Little Raiders next year. So we went from 33 up to 90 for Little Raiders. So we're going to put 60 more kids. And we're going to pre-K are going to be going to our pre-K, Little Raiders University next year, which is really well. And then again, those pre-K costs are all borne by grant funds. That is nothing in the operating budget. It's all borne by grants. Except for their, uh, except for their insurance and all that, correct? Their insurance? Their insurance that we pay them if they get hurt on the job and so on and so forth? Who? The, the uh, people who teach the... Uh, the employees. Oh, the employees. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, right, the employees, right. So the insurance is getting more, but you know, the city actually pays the policy, but right. So if anything happens, right, where they're out. But you hired them on grant money, correct? We right. hired them on grant money, that's correct. So their salaries are being paid for by the grant. So if the grant goes away, what happens to their jobs? Will the city pick up the tab? Uh, no, the grants that we, uh, are for, for the pre-K are 10-year uh, grants. So we have one that's locked in for five years, PDG, the other two, the Smart Start grants, are locked in for 10 years. It's through tobacco funds through the state of Connecticut. Uh, they purposely put it through those funds so they can't be moved in that 10-year period of time. So those are secured for the 10-year for the, for the period of time. I'm sorry. No, ask uh, questions. Yeah, I want you to ask questions. questions. I like questions. Go on, don't yeah. worry. Keep it going. That, that Keep messaging that <laughs> as we add to the district, the more things we can do with outside funding uh, to add to the district so it's not uh, borne by local taxpayer dollars, uh, the better. So, and it's good that, that we educate people to that as well. So asking the questions helps us get so, that uh, message out. So with the 90 students you're going to have in the Little Raiders, uh, um, they, they pay for that. Correct? To, they, to go there? They do not. They do not. It's a free service? It is a free service right now. Now, we do have an option with a percent of students, depending upon what grant pays for the students to go there, determines whether you can then have the parents apply for additional grant funds called Care for Kids, which is on a sliding scale, uh, pays, uh, reimburses the district for tuition costs that we would normally uh, have incurred. But that's driven by the grant. So the PDG grant does not allow you to then go for additional Care for Kids dollars. The Smart Start funding does. Uh, but then you have some of your kids that would have a tuition and some wouldn't if you choose to go down that, that route. So the takeaway from the slide is, again, the, the increase you're seeing here, the increase we're seeing of the 70, the 57 is driving it out of the uh, at Little Raiders, and there's some slight increases in each of the other schools. So, to give you an idea of what we're looking at as far as the student population goes, change in student population. Okay, and again, this is an eye chart. So, but this is if you want to get into any of the details, and I, I know I'm not going to go through all of it, but I will, every, any questions you have, I will answer. But basically, I've summarized this, and again, you'll see the highest drivers you would have seen, you know, on the, uh, or, you know, drivers as far as going up or down you would have seen on the prior bar charts. So, um, but again, this is just a roll up and it's a breakup. And again, this is very standard accounting. This is called the universal, um, you know, chart of accounts that we use. Every school system basically uses the same chart of accounts in the state of Connecticut. So it's pretty standard. So again, you'll see all the things we talked about, right? You'll see salaries. I mean, there's our total salaries, 11 million seven. So overall, you know, an overall increase of about 32,000 in salaries because again, all the reasons we talked about, some of the professions we moved out and we've looked at you know different ways to, to craft our budget. So right now, you know, basically you'll see up here increases and some decreases. But I have a question for you, yes, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. professionals, they're not part of the union negotiation. They're not. Yes. The same. Are they, they have a separate union. They have a separate union. So the paraprofessionals have a separate okay. union 
from the so they're not DEA. They have their own. They are so their they're union and their their contracts are negotiated. Yes, they are. They're negotiated. To, this would would have been a year where we would renegotiate, but I received a call uh, from them to ask if we can just extend current contract for another year. Which is what? What's their uh, two percent, two percent, two percent, two percent increase, as yes. well as a, an additional increase in their uh, premium uh, percentage toward the premium goes up another percent to two percent as well uh, toward their benefits. So um, uh, we have no problem with extending it for the other year. Our goal was, to, if we did have to open it back up, that the only thing we would negotiate would have been uh, wages anyway. So this actually uh, helps us with that. Uh, what is happening, though, separate from the paras, the paras used to be paras and nurses <coughs> together. Two months ago, uh, the nurses, which, of which we have four, uh, requested through the para union if they could go into their own union. So they would prefer to be represented by a union in the state that represents nurses, not paraprofessionals. Uh, so the para union, not having a problem with that, uh, accepted their, their petition. And uh, we will begin negotiations with them. Uh, we have a meeting this week to simply go over ground rules. Um, and then they will begin negotiations uh, for the four employees who are nurses in the district. I'm, I'm just quick, quick question for a teacher substitute. You didn't, you didn't have anything in the budget for this year? Excellent question. Yeah. So what we did last year was, that was a good pickup. So what we did last year was, we were using uh, interns, we were using the Sacred Heart Intern Program. What we decided was, although that worked well, we found it better maybe this year to have substitutes, a permanent substitute at each of the schools. So therefore, they will float, they'll be there and do everything we need. So instead of paying uh, you know, maybe four or five substitutes for a day to cover period, 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 we'll have one substitute in there. So that's, that's a good pickup, is that the teacher substitutes were out last year, we used interns, and they're in, the, right, this year they'll be in so it was, it wasn't that well? It didn't work that well? It, you know, it, it worked well. We had we actually had one, we picked up one intern at the high school that worked out super. And as a matter of fact, we're going to pick up another intern this year. So instead of using the budget for the substitute, Irving's elected, they're going to pick up an intern also next year. So and the interns get paid or no? The in, we you actually pay. 14000 a year. Yep. Yeah. So we got, this is through Sacred Heart, we can ran the program. But again, the high school, they were thrilled with the, yeah. the intern they had. So, uh, Ms. Olson's going to pick up one at uh, Irving next year um, because it's a pretty well-renowned program. So that's uh, why you'll see a difference this year. So, this, so for the upcoming school year, there'll be no interns working as substitutes. Right. So what we'll do is, although we were envisioning no interns this year, what I will do is I'll take the portion of this that will be for that one intern. So I'll have one intern, and then the other buildings will have substitutes. So it's still going to come to the same amount of money. It's just how the line item breaks out. But these seventy-five thousand stays the same. That's page one. Page two. Well, again, you'll see the intern program coming out, right? So it was out and it's in. So the substitutes are a little more expensive, but you get a lot more bang for your buck with these substitutes because you have a building substitute. They can actually go from room to room to room from period to period instead of obligating a substitute all day long. They may only work a couple of periods, um, and it gets expensive. It's an expensive proposition, and it's also good to have that one face that these kids know in the building every single day instead of having a Kelly sub, Kelly sub, Kelly sub. You've got 183 subs during the course of the year. So, uh, and not, to, not anything against the substitute program, but it's just better to have a building sub there. Um, what else? People services, again, we talked about that's a speech teacher that, um, again, was in-house. We've gone out, so that budget's there. Uh, so, if I recall, too, uh, if we look back even two years, for that substitute line, I think we were close to 100000 or, or over right. at one point for that substitute line. So uh, because of the way we now offer professional development, we've been able to drastically reduce the number of substitutes that we have to use in classrooms. The big benefit is that the children... The students have their teacher in the classroom instead of a substitute or a known uh, individual um, within the building, as opposed to just a substitute showing up, where then you're dealing with behavior problems uh, each time that happens. So unless they, they are substitutes that are regularly in the building. But we have reduced the number of substitutes needed by uh, 
how we offer professional development inside the classroom as opposed to taking teachers and sending them out of district. And again, you know, down at the bottom, the big, you know, this is the one where you see. Ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pupil services, is yes, that the one that includes the speech services? Very good. That's, okay. exact, that's exactly you, right. You, you said before, earlier on, mm -hmm. that you eliminated the speech therapist and are outsourcing. Right. And you're getting more bang for your buck, but you're spending $80,000 more? No, no. What, what I'm saying to you is that the, we, we, in the prior year, that speech therapist was in a salary line. Right. Now what we've done is we've moved that same amount of money, but we've outsourced it. So that one person, that one, that one company that we're paying now can cover a lot more ground. For so phenomenal question. You know, it yeah. looks like an increase, yeah. but it's just moving it from one yeah. line in the budget to this line. So it's not increasing this line and leaving it there. It's simply moving it where it was in certified salaries right. to here where it's going to be paid uh, contracted services. All right, but what I'm what I'm we're also at, then not paying uh, benefits. All right. right, I understand that, but so basically we'll what you're saying is you're yes. using, in a sense, one speech pathologist th therapist for one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. No, ma'am, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you look at, you have to look at look, look at the delta. So what I'm basically yeah. saying is I've kept right. my pupil services excluded speech. Now I've added the speech. So the delta in here, oh, I added okay. a little increase yeah. here. Okay, so that's like fifty thousand. So basically, it's seventy-seven thousand. Right. The delta, if you take that away, that's the speech therapist you're talking okay. about. Okay. All right. So the forty-eight thousand didn't include speech. No, ma'am. Okay. And we Got do it. still have one yeah. one left. So when uh, if you look back two years, you had three speech pathologists in the district. Mm -hmm. uh, from all of my experience, for the number of students receiving speech mm -hmm. in our special education population. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have three in a district this small uh, is a very small caseload for each of those people. Uh, so uh, I then pulled a number of districts to inquire about the same and what their caseloads are. I then looked at the National Speech Pathologist Association uh, for direction on size of caseloads, number of hours per week and so forth, which is all driven by the individual IEP for a student. Um, so we were able to so we still have, we do still have one, mm -hmm. so we reduced it from three to one, and now we outsource for those students that need it per their IEP. And where we also save is in their benefits. Right. So you're no longer paying benefits for those exactly. two staff members that are no longer here, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to their salary. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, so the hours that we pay for now are people on the ground actually providing services, and they're only in district during the time they're providing services. Got it. Thank you. Could you sure. go back one page? Sure. There was an increase in the uh, custodians for uh, 65, about 65,000, 64,000. Excellent question. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, what we're doing is, you know, again, the custodians rate did go up. What we're doing this year is we are adding, and I believe, hopefully I put that in the package at the end, Should be but the we end. can skip through it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm adding, we're proposing to add a half part-time custodial person just for outside work, primarily to make sure that those school grounds are as pristine as possible. Okay? So we're pretty thin. As far as custodians go, I will say we're pretty, we're pretty thin. Okay? We, we're going first shift, second shift. So we've added a little bit of overtime for the summer to get some painting done. And then we've also added a half, of, a half a person to do outside, cut the lawns, weeding, maintenance, that type of thing. Do you know what the cost is? The salary would be for that person? The salary for that person, I've estimated, would be roughly about $25,000. So what we looked at to do that, and what the board asked us to do, was to get bids for our landscaping costs. So we went out to bid uh, for this, thinking we're going to contract this out. Uh, but what we realized uh, when all the bids came back is we could actually hire somebody for less cost of what, it, what we received bids on for the service and have the person in district part-time, not to just do lawns, but any additional time that is needed, they could be doing other projects as well. So we did first approach to contract out and uh, sent out the bid, uh, but the quotes we received were all above the amount. We could hire somebody part-time to come in and do all the lawn, lawn care, 
uh, and at the same time provide us other services outside of just the landscaping. Because the landscaping, I don't know if you've driven around, uh, as soon as that, the, the weeds start coming up and the grass starts growing, but it was atrocious. So, uh, and these are our schools, um, uh, but it was atrocious. We need to do better job. What we also added in there, like I mentioned, is we've added in um, some summer help uh, to come in and to uh, take care of painting. Uh, I will say, if you haven't been to the high school, we painted most of that high school last year. It looked pretty nice. We opened schools for us, we're shining, and we painted it well. So we tried to do as much as we could last year with the other three schools. So this year we're going to focus on the other three schools, and we're going to have the vision would be, depending upon the, uh, the finance committee here, is to have, you know, we'll pay some summer help to come in, and we'll be painting at all the schools. So I'm hoping that, you know, we'll get as much done as we can. But if you put one person, in a school that's a decent painter, we have some retired teachers that paint. Um, and you put them in there for seven weeks, we can get a lot of painting done. So again, that, that increase you see there is just the uh, increase of what the salary being for the, uh, for the salary agreement with the custodial union, and then also the, uh, the added help for the uh, outside maintenance, and then the summer painting. Do you know how much the custodian union went up by? The they were also 3%. And that contract runs a long, that contract runs 2019, I think, yeah. right? That's no? uh, a long-running contract. So. Well, your special education, um, I'm just going to assume that um, that's a pretty broad spectrum of what's included in special education. Is that the salary line up there? No, not the salary line. I'm talking about special ed per se. Um, how, how would you define that? Special ed. Special education. How is it defined in the Derby Public Schools? Is it, um, I, I guess I threw you a curve. No, it's okay. Uh, now, are we talking about uh, physical challenges, emo emotional or right. cognitive challenges? All, all of us. Are we all talking we, about... He's, he's uh, he's, he's, uh, um, Conduct challenges. We're covering all of these. As far as, yeah. Anybody? Yes, correct. Anybody that would be uh, have an active IEP, IEP and obviously. services are provided by that IEP would would be under special education services. So I guess my question is along with what you're showing here. I, I see some changes on this sheet with uh, teachers and uh, are there other things? that are also associated <coughs> with, uh, with special ed, but are not called on called special ed on this budget. Such as, just an example. An example, um, on a broad sense, security. No, then it wouldn't be. Good, great, great question, because a yeah. percent of security, right. if we were doing, uh, so no, the answer to that would be no. A, a percent of that individual employee's salary yeah. is not attributed to the special education service line in our budget. But, uh, so. That's, that's like, I guess that's the right. You, you could budget that way, no question about it. You could divide it up that way, but, uh, but no, our school climate specialist would be under uh, one area. Uh, though we could break out a percent, some percent of their yeah. salary. I guess that's my point. Though. Yeah, no, great. Uh, that's my point. Yeah. yeah. We, it's a, a way we, we uh, you could budget, but it's not in this budget. It's right. not budgeted that way. Right. Okay. Um, now, other parts of this budget, uh, by object, by, by location, will actually break things out further for you um, by location, because we want individual cost centers, so we do actually know what something is costing us uh, uh, within each individual building. Uh, so you will see it presented in different ways, broken out in different ways, so you can get those answers. Uh, but I'm just trying to clarify this for myself. Yeah. I know you guys do a good job, but I'm trying to clarify yeah, this. No, great you, you should ask us yeah. questions. Yep, but we didn't break it out that <laughs> And you can do the same thing with custodial service, sure. all those yeah. uh, additional services right. too. One more, sorry. No. Oh, other perks and services. What does that include? 
So other purchase services, the big drivers in here are going to be, that, that primarily is going to be uh, substitute teachers. That's, that's a, big, a big piece of that line. Um, so the drivers in there, yeah, it's basically that's the substitute teachers. And then there's some other services that we do provide with some miscellaneous expenses. It ends up being a lot of little things we go out and purchase outside. Okay, so you have the building, I know the question you're going to ask. So we have 75000 in there for building subs, right? But then, so that's a permanent person, a body that will be there during the course of the year. Then you have to have substitute teachers, so when a teacher calls in sick, the teacher calls in sick, the art teacher calls in sick, the music teacher calls in sick. We have to go to Kelly Services, and we have to get that service in here. So that's a big piece of what goes into other persons. What does the permanent person do then? Hmm? What does the permanent person do? So a permanent person who is in there to be the building substitute. So they're there to kind of handle a period of time, period of time. But what happens is, I mean, there's a lot of absences during the course of the day. Bereavement, sick, things like that. So one person can't possibly cover that. When you're talking, talk potentially, what, 30, 35 classrooms? Right. Potentially in a school, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is the teacher's out sick for the day, they call Kelly Services, Kelly mm -hmm. Services comes in at $110 a day, mm -hmm. and they come mm -hmm. up for the day and they'll run it. Same thing mm -hmm. with Paris, too. Kelly Office of Paris, Paris also. So again, you know, when you look at it, people call in sick, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand the need for subs and using Kelly services to bring the subs in. But I, I still am not clear on the permanent persons. What is this permanent person doing? They're the first sub in the building every day. Okay. So They're the first sub in the building every day. And we looked at a district that does something similar to this that I looked at is, is uh, Merritt. So what they do is they have this one permanent sub per, per their buildings under 30 hours a week uh, total, so we don't have to run into benefits. Um, uh, so we save there. And then, and then for the others, they'll use a Kelly Services okay. or, or others. So but at least every day, that first person that's going to call out, mm -hmm. you have somebody in the building that the students know, uh, and it's there each day. And then flexibility-wise, if you have to pull a teacher from a classroom for a specific thing that, that has come up, you get that person then, you have somebody to go right into that classroom for. Mm -hmm. And you're not paying somebody else to cover it. You said under 30 hours a week. Yeah. All right, so that permanent person is there on a daily basis? That's correct. Or how many hours a day? Uh, it, it would, uh, for the hours of the day, under 30 hours a week. If, if we needed somebody, say they were there four days a week for, let's say, six hours a day. Right. Um, uh, no, excuse me, it's six hours a day times the five. Mm -hmm. We would keep them under the 30 hours a week. Okay. All right. So you're not paying them beyond the regular a teaching day like you would a regular teacher. Now the, the school hours are how many hours a day that the kids in school? Are the teaching hours. So uh, uh, teachers are seven hours, seven hours a day, mm -hmm. uh, but they have time, wraparound time before and after uh, that you're paying them for. Mm -hmm. if, if, you're hi if you're going to hire potentially two or whatever the amount of permanent stuff is, then when it in all reality, that overtime number, well, like it's not called, or sub number, go down instead of increase. So how are we hiring subs? But then on the other way, we're saying we need more subs. So okay. we got rid of the Sacred Heart University program, right? And we're right. Going to go down the one for that fourth. That was an internship. That was an internship. The internship right. program. So right. if you went down there, right. But that line item still increased, and now you're increasing it here as well. So. Well, yeah, purchase services is basically it is substitute teachers, is fiscal services, strategic planning. So there's other services we go outside and buy. So in other words, we have a check, we have a check process and paychecks, okay? I have to pay them. Right? We have inter we have an audit that comes to an auditor that comes in and does some reconciliations for us. We pay that. So that's all in this other purchase services. So it's not just substitutes. There's other items that go in there that I have to go outside and pay outside health. That's the out of the district. Audit, audit audit services services line. Right above it. Right. Separate line item. No, no, this is this is uh, okay, the audit's there. Strategic planning, right, I misspoke, right. The audit that we did break down separately last year because it right it should be broken out, right. So the professional service is basically substitute teachers. It's uh, it's the paycheck processing fee, because we went we outsourced the paycheck processing. Um you see what else? Yeah, fiscal services. So I have a person that comes in. Actually, I'm gonna have, have to try to get rid of that. But that comes in, does some reconciliations for us. The strategic planning we have in there. Like I said, other proof, and that's fiscal services. Yeah. 
so that makes it up. So it's primarily the substitutes, and there's some other, again, there's a little, there's a small, bunch of smaller items in there. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can give you the list if you want and what's in the estimate. But again, the primary driver here is going to be the substitutes. It's the physical um, paying of the paychecks. What's Check. the difference between the, the, um, the out of district uh, regular and the out of district sped compared to the pupil transportation regular and the pupil transportation special education? Okay, let's step through this. Okay, so this is our regular, the regular students. This is all star transportation. This is our contract. This is the 11 buses we have running every single day. Right. Right? That's the regular ed students, okay? Now what happens is with these special education students, they can they go to different agencies, different places. So there's a bunch of places, Boys and Girls Village in Milford. Uh, there's uh, Aces runs a different bunch of different places. Okay, so we have to get these these students to these to these facilities. Some of these students could be up to three hundred and fifty dollars a day to transfer them because of the expense and because of the special needs these students have. So what you'll see here is that, again, these are for the yellow school bus you'll see running up and down the streets during the course of the week. This is all special transportation services that are related to special education students. So that goes down into this line here, which is out of district sped. Okay. And that went up $454,000? Yes, it did. Because what happened was we had some, some rate increases from a couple of the agencies that we go to, and also we had the number of special ed students we have also be increased. Now, I will tell you that we also budgeted for one extra student in here that is kind of like an X right now, uh, based on an average, because what we found is you're going to be chasing your tail at the end of the year. Like for this year right now. Right now, I'm behind. I'm behind, and I'm trying to close the gap because we have more special ed costs coming into the state, into the district, than I planned on in last year's budget. So as hard as you try to budget, and you'll talk to any other district, any other business manager, or the other superintendent, they're going to tell you the same thing. This is one of the hardest things to control because you owe these children an education. And if they come into the district, we owe them an education. If they come with special needs, so it's, it's really tough. It's a, this is a tough one. And they, this isn't like, you know, an oil bill, an extra oil delivery. You're talking potentially, again, figure it out. Three, it's 300, say it's $300 a day, and I'm running at 200. You know, you're talking $50,000 of transport potentially one child for a year because of the special needs of the student. Then we have to accommodate as taxpayers, as, you know, as, as Board of Education members, we have to accommodate these students. We, we did ask uh, the Budget Subcommittee, um, and on their direction, we did uh, initially approach, uh, as we did last year as well, for two contingencies. Um, and it was um, the will of the Board to just go into the budget with one contingency. Does the state give you any money for that? So let me answer that question. That's yeah. an excellent question. Yeah. What happens is the state comes back to us and there's something called excess costs. So what they're saying is, hey, look, it, you guys are responsible up to X, let's say whatever the amount of money is. So let's say it's $75,000. So any student over $75,000 is in a very complicated formula. The bottom line is you get something called an excess cost grant. Okay. So for this year, for instance, I'm gonna, we're going to get back about $215,000. So beyond what we spent for special education, we're going to get $215,000 back because that's the formula the state applied. Some, if the formula will vary every single year. It depends how many special education students are within the state system and then how much money we get back as the city of Derby. Okay, it varies from year to year. Last year we got a little bit more than that. Okay? This year we're going to get about $215,000. Hopefully that will close the gap. Not quite there. I'm going to have to find money someplace else to close our budget this year at 17 dollars why have we got almost a $50,000 increase in the regular transportation? Because the bus prices go up year to year. It's a contract increase. 8%? Okay. That's what the price went up, yeah. Are we, did we add a bus? Or no? Next status quo? Well, really? that was the other, no, no. So what also happened is exactly right, is we had to add another bus in here, too. So we added another bus because I believe last year we were under budgeted by one bus. We had to add a bus in. Okay, so that was the other thing we picked it up. So it's an added a bus in. Plus, and again, the buses are expensive. I mean, you think about a bus, it's 200, next year I think it's $295 a day per bus times 11 buses. So it's expensive. But again, safety of these kids and getting them back and forth, and again, we're in the hands of a good contractor. So but that's, that's the reason. What is the average uh, absentee for a teacher? Like how many teachers are out in a given day? Uh, we're at about 98% uh, right now, so we report that out on our website actually uh, on a monthly basis as well, but I think we're about 98%. How uh, does that work in numbers? Uh, depending upon the school, so if you have 30, 30 teachers, 
uh, and you have um, one or two teachers out, you will you'll be, you'll hit your 98 percent. Again, supplies. You're asking good questions, and I want you to ask questions. Look, you guys, you said you said that the, you can't go away with questions. Are 110 dollars right mm -hmm. per day? About 110 dollars. So let's just say you had two on average per day. Yeah. More, at, don't forget, now I'm at every school. Then we have Berea, yeah. then we have professional development. So there, like Dr. Thomas, there is some professional development. We neutralize that, but again, at 103 dollars a day, that's what we're paying. At 180 80. days, it's like yeah. what 19 thousand a year. 19, 20 thousand. Right, so for right. two, it's 39 eight. Right, right. So, and then you got to then have every school, right? And then you have professional development, you have bereavement, you know, but, but, but that's counted in the absence. But so it's not just sick days, it's professional development. And Dr. Conway has really been cut down these half days or days where these teachers are going out. Professional development is done when the students aren't there, so we're not disrupting the classrooms. So again, but there's other things, you know, bereavement, you have personal illness, FMLA, you have people, you know, if somebody's out of the Family Medical uh, Leave Act, right? I gotta cover that. I gotta right. cover that, right? So I'm paid a salary. Well, that's why I was asking for a rate, an average right. of what you get out per day. Right. That's why. I, that's right. Why I was asking. Right. No, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked a good question. Because you're saying you're at 98 percent. Correct. But we have, you know, some weeks. How that many are, teachers are in the school system? Uh, total of about 140. Okay. So you're, you're between two and three percent there if you do that percent. And then you have the parents too. You know, we have to get subs for the parents too, right? Because you need the parents in the classroom to support the kids. So we have the parents too. Um, as far as the rest of the expenses go, um, you know, again, uh, supplies, I basically kept everything flat. I mean, I just tried the best as I could. A couple of things we had to peek out, but I tried to keep the, you know, all that stuff is flat. Um, you know, our, our licensing, again, a lot of licensing and software to go into the school system, keep things running, things from like Microsoft Office and Outlook and all those things that we need to keep keep the machine running, right? So, I mean, look at office supplies. I mean, that's a pretty austere budget. So, I mean, there was a couple of things we had added in there for extra postage this year, but you know, that got added in here. But I tried to keep everything as low as I could. The good news is on heating oil, you know, again, we got, we got last, last winter with Derby High School being electric heat, we had a really rough year uh, getting through the end of last year to close that on budget. So, uh, you know, we had a very. Is it feasible to hire someone to run the generator to run to give the electricity to the high school from the middle school? Run the generator off the middle school. The uh, the unit they have there. Oh, the, the turbines. Oh yes, the turbines. Yeah. So that is sending uh, electricity over. So what we can do for the first time now, since that was installed, is measure. The amount going over, but that's all automated. You don't need somebody to run that. So as long you as you don't need someone. To no, run that? no, no. As long as it's fit over 50 degrees, those things run very efficiently, and they're kicking electricity over that high school, and it's offsetting electrical costs. So we're not able to monitor that. Do you know how much it's offsetting your cost? Uh, that's the information that we're waiting for. One more piece of uh, software, right. I believe, to be able to actually measure the the cost to get the cost savings. Uh, in terms of the kilowatts being sent over. Right. So that's the last piece, I believe, in the puzzle uh, that the building exactly. committee yeah, we had it for the first two years. Uh, and then it just stopped. So now we're buying a dashboard to measure it. Right. The first year, I think it was like 300,000. But now this dashboard is going to manage it. The, the key is the sequence of how they fire up the building. They have to fire up the middle school first. Right. And then the high school. Then the high school, right. Because if you fire the high school up first, the turbines aren't kicking in in the middle school, then so it's not going to draw as much demand, right? So you can turn on the middle school first, fire up those the turbines, then it will shed the electricity to the high school. But it is automated, and the dashboard is going to help to manage it. But the key is the sequence in which you start the buildings. If you do it out of sequence, you get nothing. And this board will supposedly do that. Well, someone the computer does it now, right? The computer does it now, but I think what Dr. Conway is saying is we will be able to tell you, hey. You're, you're sending over 65 kilowatt hours, you know, a, an hour or whatever it is, you know, however it's measured. We'll be able to measure that. So right now, without this dashboard, we can't, we can generally say, but I don't think we can say it in any great deal, detail how much electricity we're, say, we're sending over. But whatever excess electricity is being done, it's being shed over to the high school and saving us from having to use electric power from CLP or UI. I have a question that 
I realize may get me stoned here in the valley, but <laughs> why is the athletic going up so much? Uh, the athletic budget this year again because we talked about is we added the trainer in this year. We have the trainer. But in you have the trainer in another section. We had no the trainer. The athletic trainer comes into interscholastic athletics. That's where the, the trainer comes in. So but you but you had it in another section of your budget. So no, you're no, it's in here. I, I showed you as one bar. Right. But that trainer is within that line item there, and that's what's driving that expense. Great, great question. That was, he showed the bar where there was an increase right, right. and explained why there was an increase, right, yeah, yeah. Right. but that, the, that, that bar was driven by this number. Right. And actually, the trainer is about a little, more, a little less than 40000 So actually, the, the interscholastic inter athletic budget actually went down if we had taken the trainer out. We actually yeah. removed some items. So again, every year we try to do is to be very fair and accommodating. We make sure that every there's two teams that get new uniforms every year. We keep rotating through so that the kids have new uniforms, like we did football last year, we did this year we're going to do cheerleading, and I think soccer. So, you know, again, some years it's more expensive, it's a more expensive outlet, outfit, the football team, the baseball team. So, again, this year actually, we actually, if it wasn't for the athletic trainer going in here, and again, we're going to reap benefits from that down the road, um, this budget actually would have gone, you know, down. <coughs> um, the other thing I want to point out again, the deltas, again, we talked about the heating oil, again, it's a very favorable contract we've entered into, we're in a consortium. Um, so we did a lot of research on our oil. Uh, the other thing we talked about is where we had $50,000 in there to support the laptops, the Lenovo laptops, the 700 laptops at the high school and middle school. Again, we're going to take those expenses out of the operating budget because the program's up and running. We made the initial purchase, and then any costs associated with the one-to-one -one program will be borne by the Alliance grant, and that's going to be in the, yeah, we'll take care of that this year. And then we took a little bit out of here. We had to take a challenge on equipment because I had to close this thing to within 3.5%. So that's the budget where they really want to get to. And then we go back and ask questions. Let's talk about the staffing. So what has changed as far as staffing goes, okay? So what we did is the staffing additions in there this year. And again, not a lot. I think, again, very, very, this is a very conservative budget. Um, we added a half a social worker at Bradley. What we're going to do is the, there was a half a social worker at Bradley last year. That, that point, 0 0.5 FTE, will now, that person will now be not splitting their time with the middle school. They're going to be at the middle school full time. We felt the need to have a full time social worker at the middle school. Therefore, that person will be there. We're going to, we're asking for consideration of adding a half of FT for a social worker at Bradley. Um, for the past few years, we've Martin, had a question. Yes, so, sir. how many social workers do you have? Three. So, okay. if you recall, last uh, two years ago, what I had. Uh, came to the city with is um, if we could increase uh, to an additional social worker, but I didn't want um, this program called D rate. So it's a federal program, and what happens is we get school systems get back money to ensure that their school systems are networked. Okay, so things like phones, actually phones work. Yeah, phones. Yeah, communications and internet, things like that. So what happens is, as this program has started, it gets peeled back a little bit every year. So when you get all done for our telecommunications costs and our internet costs and the infrastructure costs, we're gonna get, we're estimating, we'll get roughly $135,000 back for this year. So when you get done with it, you know, our real budget, let's say, is $17.7 .7 million, so roughly 2.7% increase. So it's something that happens. Um, it's good news. We get that money back, so we're paying, we're paying the bills, and then we're gonna get the money back. So again, this program has decreased uh, as far as it, as time goes on. Originally, it was like 80 percent, 75 percent. We're now getting it to 60 percent, so this number is diminishing. But it's money that is coming back into the city for us to do some good things with the education. That goes back to the fall, right? Right. right. So that money won't return to us until late fall. Right. It's always like a lag. No, okay. Next school year, so I'll start getting the checks back. So that's about 135,000. So if you take net that out, it increases about 2.75 percent. Does that e rebate go back to the the school system, or yes. does it go back to the city? It goes back to the school system. That was the agreement we had uh, a couple of weeks back. So it does go back to the school system. So we can do some some things to help ourselves out. But we included in the 3.52, yeah. so that it means. 
money we would not be eligible for if we didn't operate as a, as a district, but uh, when you offset the 3.52 by the 135, in terms of taxpayer dollars, it's, it's 2.74. And remember that we're, we're not funding, as a city, the 17220. We're receiving, you can back 8 million out of that. We're receiving over $8 million from the state of Connecticut to get us to the 17 million. So you're only funding about nine of the, of the 17 as a city. And as we also said too, on top of that money, again, coming back, so the ECS money come back from the city, from the state, okay, is $8 million. And on top of that, again, like I said to you, this year roughly we have about $3.7 million in grant funds. Okay, so add that on here. So you know, that's also money the city's not paying for. That's money we're getting back from federal government, Title I, Title II, Alliance grants, you know, priority school districts. So, you know, yeah, you know, Dr. Conway has done an excellent job, you know, working with Hartford to ensure that we continue to get money. So, you know, that's 17 2 on top of that. You can add another three, four, or, you know, 17 8. You can add another $4 million on top of the next year. So, we're running about a $22, $23 million budget. So, um, you know, we're doing a lot of good things. Again, go to that high school. If you haven't gone to that high school, walk through that high school. See how that high school looks. It looks wonderful. We, out, we, we outfitted that whole high school. We redid the whole thing. In the summer, uh, we're starting two projects, one at the high school, one at Bradley, to replace the windows. Um, so again, no taxpayer, local taxpayer dollars involved in this, uh, but through grants.